Uh, hi, this is Mike McKinnon. Uh, this is Three Oaks Senior High Auto Instructor. This is for a 801D course where we do manual steering, electric steering as a unit. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the rack and pinion and then I'm going to do the measurement or the adjustment, sorry, for the pinion and rack gear mesh. Okay, so just a quick intro to the tr this here rack and pinion. This is what they would call a center takeoff rack and pinion, not one where that's very common, but it is on a few vehicles. This would have came off of a uh, Sunbird or Cavalier in the early, late 80s, early 90s. So what that means is the rack has is here and the pinion gear is here. And these two sockets here that are holding, this is where the inner tie rods would connect to. And there would be a long rod go out to the steering knuckles. So as I turn the steering shaft here, you'll see this slide back and forth. So that's why it's called a center takeoff because the actual take, uh, rack movement is coming from the center rather than the ends. So that's from one side all the way to the other. Now you will notice a little bit of burp in there. This is actually a hydraulic power steering rack, but for manual steering or electric steering, essentially it's the exact same rack. So for the adjustment we're going to do, we're going to adjust this here rack bushing. Okay, uh, this is the adjustment nut. This is the jam nut. The rack bushing, there's a spring under here, and then there's a bushing under here. And the bushing pushes with spring pressure to push the rack against this pinion. Okay, so I'm going to perform that adjustment, but other, and I'm going to put it in a vise here. When I do that, I'm also going to show you how that torsion bar works. And we need that for electric power steering as well. <clears throat> Okay, so the make sure when you're vicing a rack and pinion or any component for that matter is to always make sure you're vicing it at a part where it would attach, where it would be mounted by brackets or whatever. If I vice in the wrong place of the housing, I'm going to squeeze the housing, maybe squeeze the bushings and make that part no, no good anymore, make it fine. <clears throat> so here's what I want to show you. I'm going to take it off center here just temporarily. This, this is like as if uh, you're at the steering stops. You're turned all the way. And what happens is they're, they're, they can't turn anymore. But you'll notice that springy action there and then it binds up solid. So that little twist is there's a torsion bar in between this steering shaft and the pinion gear. So they, But eventually it only turns so much and then it locks up. This gives you your road feel, and it also, for the electric power steering, tells the torque sensor how much torque is being applied to that steering, so it can decide how much assist it's going to give you based on inputs of sensors and different things. So now to do the adjustment, I'm gonna bring the rack back to center. Okay, so basically you can measure that. You could count your turns. Okay, so I could go from stop to stop and go one, two, Almost three, okay? So almost three, so a turn and a half from here, or a little less. So there's one, there's a half, and we'll go a little less, and we'll call that center. That's the position that we need to be in to do this measurement here, or this adjustment. You're gonna do this adjustment if you have drivability concerns, of uh, clunk noises, loose steering, um, the other thing is, is we, when I first did it, it was because of a recall on the Sunfires and Cavaliers in the in the '94 to '99s, um, and maybe even later later than that. So the jam nut's now loose, and now I can adjust this nut. So the adjustment plug nut, just simply oh, take an adjustable wrench or the or the size of the size of it, and you lightly bottom so. Try and take the slop out of that adjustable wrench here. So you just go till it's lightly bottomed. You don't go torque it, lightly bottomed. And then you're gonna turn back 60 to 70 degrees. So a lot of times what I like to, what I'll do is I'll just, okay, wait now, there's my wrench handle and there's 90. Okay, so take 20 to 30 degrees off that. There's 45. So somewhere in between there is where I'm gonna turn that to. Okay, oh. Now my 90 changed because a little bit of the slop. 
So still right about there, at about 11.30. So you could even use a clock reference. So I'm going to turn that back to about 11.30. Okay. Now I'm ready to hold that. I want that adjustment to stay there. So now I'm going to lock that jam nut. Now this skill, you may not do it much for rack and pinions, but this skill can be transferred to many different uh, applications depending on what career you choose. Jam nuts are used quite often to lock adjustments in. Okay. So as I'm tightening that jam nut, I want to make sure my oh, adjustment nut doesn't move a lot. Remember, we have a range of 60 to 70. And as I'm holding that from turning, I'm locking that jam nut. And that jam nut needs to be locked that it can go back on the road, not just a little bit snug. There, that isn't moving. That is tight. Okay. And then afterwards, you can kind of check your adjustment. And actually, that actually rolls a lot smoother than it did. This is one I have for tasks. So somebody adjusted that maybe just a little too tight. Now I don't have a rumble in it. It's nice and smooth. Okay, so that's how you adjust. Any rack and pinion adjust the same way, no matter if it's center takeoff, end takeoff, whether it's on a bigger truck um, or, or whatever it might be. Thank you.